Putting the lens on Grenada, its people and its possibilities. This is State of Affairs. Presenting this week, I am Sherry Ann Noel. Grenada to host two international cricket matches in 2019. Climate change formed part of the exhibits during National Science Fair 2018. And 500 young men enrolled in the Ministry of Youth Development Empower program. These are the images from across Grenada. This is State of Affairs. More stories after this. Whenever a pedestrian is attempting to cross a pedestrian crossing or any other road, he must first stop and make sure that there is no oncoming vehicle. However, if there is any oncoming vehicle, he crosses briskly from one side to the other. If there is any vehicle proceeding, he ensures that vehicles come to a complete stop. After that vehicle comes to a complete stop, he crosses briskly from one side to the other. Remember, your safety comes first. The National Cricket Stadium at Queen's Park in St. George will be the venue for two one-day international cricket matches in 2019 when England tours the West Indies. Grenada last hosted international cricket matches three years ago and since the announcement by Sports Minister Senator the Honorable Nolan Cox, cricketing fans have all echoed positive sentiments. While congratulating the government on its successful bid to host the two matches, that will undoubtedly create an economic spin-off for the country. And what a grab! What a brilliant, brilliant catch! Edge down, go! A superb spell from Joseph suddenly had the West Indies on top, and with bad weather in the air, Butler and Moeen knew they had to up the run rate. International cricket returned to the National Cricket Stadium in St. George, Grenada after three years. Grenada has been successful in its bid to host two one-day international cricket matches on February 25th and 27th, 2019, when England tours the West Indies. Grenada will be the host country of the third and fourth ODIs. The two ODI matches are expected to add significant value to the Grenadian economy. Sports Minister Senator the Honorable Nolan Cox says like most if not all Grenadians, he too is very elated that his government through Prime Minister Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, who has a passion and love for the game of cricket, was successful in its bid for the two ODIs. Senator Cox says he knows that Grenadians have been looking forward to the return of international cricket to the stadium for some time now. Um, I am pleased as most Grenadians are. Uh, that we, uh, the Greater Cricket Association, the Government of Greater, the Ministry of Sports, uh, together at Cricket West Indies, we 
uh, are at a juncture where we have exciting times ahead of us, which is lovely cricket. Um, we are expecting to host England uh, February uh, 25th and 27th. That's just cricket, but they're going to be here, I think, by the 23rd and leaving on the 28th, so they'll be in Greater for about five to seven days. And we are hoping that we have uh, working towards an excellent uh, tournament that uh, 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 cricket uh, in Grenada for 2019. I, I want to credit it to to two individuals, um, our Prime Minister and CEO of Cricket West Indies, uh, Johnny, um, uh, because there have been a lot of discussions in the background for us to get where we are now. And I just wanted to, to put it on record to to really uh, say hats off uh, to our Prime Minister for for working uh, with myself and the ministry to make sure that we, we, we found a way to, to make it happen. And for Cricket West in the CEO, Johnny, uh, for communicating with us and listening and acceding to some of our requests and tweaking things to ensure that where we are today. So I just wanted to, to, to state that that is very important. Cricket West Indies Communications and Marketing Officer Dominic Warren says it will be very exciting few months ahead for Cricket West Indies and the government and people of Grenada. In the context, what's exciting about this tour, it's probably the biggest English, England tour there's been for 10 years. And in terms of the West Indies, we know that uh, an England tour is a huge piece, both in terms of profile, but also economic impact as well. Not least driving interest in the game and hopefully driving young people to get inspired by West Indies performances. Um, it's probably going to be the biggest tour to the West Indies by any team for the foreseeable future as well, because the ICC is putting together a World Test Championship schedule. So the fact that there are three test matches, five ODIs, of which there are two in Grenada, and then three T20s, the likes of which we might not see for the, another five, six, seven years. We just do not know. So uh, coming back to Grenada specifically, and the two ODIs, Again, where it gets very interesting, um, let's t talk on the schedule first and who we're playing, England as world number ones currently um, in a World Cup year, which is going to be in, in, in May, June. Massive preparation for us, probably the biggest test in cricket right now for the team to play against England. Different areas of the economy stands to benefit financially from the ODIs as the English team is expected in the island from February 23rd and will spend between five to seven days. Um, we know that Grenada is obviously trying to uh, build the profile and tourism reputation, which is very exciting. And I know as an Englishman, not that many people have been to Grenada before. So as a stunning beautiful jewel of the Caribbean great opportunity so we're working with eight or nine big tour operators who are going to be bringing English fans in, into the Caribbean and we know that Grenada's right at the top of the list in terms of what they want to be uh, coming to see and to experience um, and then thirdly and finally just in terms of uh, getting local fans um, one of the key things that we're going to be looking to do is actually making tickets affordable for local fans obviously we want uh, the more atmosphere we can generate in the game the better it is for the team the more exciting it is to watch on tv uh, and the better support it is for the west indies team itself so uh, we'll be putting things uh, some discounts and some promotions and uh, lots of lots of activities in place working with uh, the Ministry for Tourism and with the Ministry for Sports uh, over the coming months too. Grenada's Royal Lewis, who is also a former national and West Indies cricketer, now holds the position of manager of the West Indies men's team. He too is very pleased that Grenada was successful in its bid to host the two ODIs. I'm very pleased that, you know, the, the stadium that I've played cricket in for 18 years, I've played cricket at the national stadium. <laughs> For 18 years of my life now, I can sit uh, on the balcony uh, in a different position off the field. Um, this is something that I really wanted to do. Um, I get the opportunity to do it, so it's very, you know, heartening for me to be home in Grenada to represent the region in this capacity. And uh, when I got into that unit, I saw a difference in the way things uh, were flowing. Um, I think the, the public's view of the team having a lot of issues and so on, I think it's mainly based on the performance of the team on the field. Because still, everyone, uh, both management and players, perform their roles respectively, uh, stick to the timelines, follow the dress code, 
Um, all, uh, not everyone is available for selection every time, but that's a different issue. But uh, within the unit itself, I couldn't say that uh, presently there are any disciplinary issues or you know persons uh, fist fighting or whether verbal fights and so on within the group. So uh, maybe it's something that the communication department probably could expose to the public a little bit more uh, and make it a bit more transparent. So that view could change. And when the performance on the field start changing, then you know everyone could see a big happy family out there. A team of technical experts from the People's Republic of China, Senator Cox says, has already conducted a tour of the cricket stadium to get a first-hand view of the areas that will need maintenance. In terms of repairing um, whatever issues that we have and in terms of the aestheticness, um, seats, whatever challenges that we have, technical and otherwise, to have that ready for uh, 2019 games. And one such is the scoreboard. Um, we have not had a feedback from them as yet as to um, how we're going to address that. But we have discussed as a ministry alternative um, approaches to addressing that. Um, as you may know, there are several uh, service pro providers in Grenada who have uh, digital screens and they can perform uh, that task as, as well. Uh, so we have already uh, contacted them, prompted them to let them know that there is a strong likelihood that we will be looking uh, towards them to provide in service, not just for the scoreboard, but also for the replay screen as well. So um, we, we await a feedback from uh, our technical team uh, from the People's Republic of China uh, to give us some timeline, timeline and to see how we can address that. And But apart from that, we uh, have an alternative in terms of uh, screens from local uh, service providers. So that is one of the things that we have discussed preliminary. Excitement is already starting to build and Raul Lewis says he does not know yet how he will feel walking into a venue that he has played most of his cricket as the manager of a West Indies team. I don't know yet how I would feel walking into the stadium with that maroon blazer uh, come the 25th uh, to sit on the balcony as the manager of the team because this is something very dear to me, uh, the sport, because that's... Uh, that's what made me, that's what have me where I am today, that gave me everything that I have. So um, it's, it's a very, very good feeling. I, I, I was just waiting on the moment, I waited on the moment when we would have international cricket in Grenada. Uh, cricket West Indies, you know, have a lot of credit to take for that. And also the government of Grenada and Grenada Cricket Association, everyone. So now it's left to us to, to just put everything together so we could have, we could continue to have cricket. Because I'm sure, I think Dom could probably explain this a little bit better, that uh, now you could know how many matches you'd have up until 2023 or something like that without bidding for it. So, you know, once cricket start playing in Grenada, we just have to keep improving in, in every area, personnel, everything. So, Grenada has been accredited in the past for having excellent cricket grounds. Supporters of both the English and West Indian teams, once out of the stadium, can indulge in the beauty of Grenada's scenic spots. I am Sharia Noel, and that's the State of Affairs. This is a Grenadian reality. This is our current State of Affairs. Guys, if I ask you what you think is the most deadly or the most dangerous creature on this planet, what are you going to say? A shark. shark. A lion. A lion. <laughs> if I tell you it's a mosquito, what are you going to say? A mosquito. A mosquito? It is a mosquito. Mosquito bites result in the deaths of more than one million people every year. Thriving in humid and damp areas, mosquitoes reproduce quickly. The females lay their eggs in water and water holding containers. When the pupa changes into adults, they leave the water and become free-flying biting insects. These biting pests can carry a number of diseases. Once you have a mosquito problem, check out your surroundings. It means that the mosquito breeding source is near your home. It is almost impossible to get rid of mosquitoes entirely. However, we can all play our part in controlling the mosquito population. Mosquito control is not solely the responsibility of the Ministry of Health, but it's also the responsibility of every member of the community. November 8th and 9th, 2019, saw the staging of the National Science Fair that brought out the creativity and skills of our students. The students put to test their ability to think logically. 
Some of the projects exhibited included rainwater harvesting, solar power and the effects of climate change. Annette Moore tells us more. The Festival of the Arts isn't the only good thing returning to Grenada School's calendar of activities in 2018. After a similarly long hiatus of nine years, the National Science Fair has also made a grand reappearance. Hosted by the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Development and Religious Affairs, the event was held on November 8th and 9th at the Grenada Trade Center. The curriculum department in the Ministry of Education saw it fit to promote climate change awareness at this national fair. We will showcase to the general public tangible efforts of our schools in ensuring our youngsters use logical, critical thinking skills to combat climate change and energy efficiency on issues under the theme highlighting STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, solutions, for climate change and energy efficiency. The project was about using natural beeswax to make other products because we recognize that the products in the shop are not healthy to the environment. So the students would have um, showcased how solar energy can be used in homes with panels. Um, as you would see here, they have a solar ch um, charging station um, showcasing electric vehicles which can be charged. Also, they have um, the solar panels producing um, current electricity for the lighting of streets and homes. Also, um, we are also showcasing here the use of rain harvesting. It's about making the water that we collect from rainwater harvesting clean. Can use waste materials to make unique things and wonderful things. Instead of you throwing it, you can make a lot of wonderful things. We are showcasing a lot of products made from waste. I wish to place on record this afternoon our ministry's commitment. Our ministry's commitment to ensuring that we do not have to wait another five years for another science fair. I'm saying that we are going to continue to make this a priority. The 2018 theme is relevant to global environmental issues which Grenada is now addressing through policy initiatives like the Styrofoam ban and the upcoming ban on single-use plastic bags. Speaking at the closing ceremony on November 9th, the Prime Minister, Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, applauded the resumption of the National Science Fair. The investment of $200,000 is a small investment. This government, if appropriate projects are in fact developed, will provide much more support for science activity throughout the length and breadth of Grenada, Caracol, and Piti Martin. Following many district science fairs held over several weeks, 60 projects from 45 primary and secondary schools, the TAM CC Science Club, Green Energy and Climate Change stakeholders were available for public viewing on November 9th. My company is Streets Upcycle Designs, right? I provide a service to the tourist industry and I provide a service to schools. So I go into schools, primary schools that is, and I teach children how to upcycle use and recycled materials. Given the very timely theme, the following important areas of environmental concern were the focus. Coastlines and the ocean, forestry and biodiversity, food security and soil, water, waste, energy and transport, and mathematics. The judges were very impressed with the fact that our projects were true to the team in that we were using STEM for solutions for, for climate change and energy efficiency. During the closing and prize-giving ceremony, many prizes were awarded for the excellent showcase of projects. This included a People's Choice Award, which went to the St. Michael's RC School for their project, Smart Thinkers. Students from participating schools voted to select the winner. The school receiving the award for the most projects and the most overall points was the St. Andrew's Methodist School. 
We heard from some of the participating students about their project. To make the um the green sand, put spinach leaves in a blender, add water, blend it, then strain it, put the sand into it, then store it, and then put the sand to dry and the sand becomes green. You can use pretty sand for decorating and all sorts of things. The name of our project is Sayo Mato Trasso Skit. Instead of buying like five time chart, then two time chart, then one time chart, you could put all of them in one box and let your child be advanced in numbers like mathematical stuff like that. Do you guys remember when you guys was little when you guys used to use slate? Well, now we renamed it because the, the ab come from aborite, which is the top layer of the um, of this. Now you can use the parcel, which is made out of pepper stock, charcoal, and old chewing gum, and you can write on it. This is called a uh, aborite rubber. You could just rub it off with the aborite rubber. In the category Waste, schools capturing the first place prizes in the primary school division were the Hillsborough Government and St. Paul's Government Schools. The latter school also placed first in the Food Security and Soil category. The St. George's Methodist School and the Victoria School for Special Education placed first in the Water category in the Senior and Junior section respectively. Go we take river water and we plant the shoes and put it in a next next bottle and and the dot in this trap in the shoelace and to, to take the apple skin and put it in the next cup and and it get more cleaner. They did everything, basically. As you can see, this is what happened to our school last August. We had to throw out printers, computers, and other sorts of documents. As you can see, the black gravel plus meat sand was up 250 milliliter. That's the amount of water that went inside the house. We recommend you to use the black gravel plus beach sand because it holds up the less amount of water from getting inside the house. The Grand Roy Government School placed first in the energy and transport category and the Constantine Methodist and St. Theresa's RC Schools placed first in the senior and junior categories respectively for forestry and biodiversity. Um, we're very proud. We worked very hard. The students enjoyed the project from beginning to end, um, they delivered, and we're happy to take the trophy home to our school. St. Louis RC Girls and Woburn Infant School placed first in the coastlines and the ocean category for senior and junior primary respectively, and Telescope Primary and the St. Michael's RC School placed first in the senior and junior section of the math category. In the upper and lower secondary school division respectively, McDonnell College and the J.W. Fletcher Memorial Catholic Schools placed first in the waste category. Our business is MDC's Biodegradable Wear Boutique. Our project is to make biodegradable clothes using recycled cement bags and crockers bags. And we use natural dyes with using saffron to make the to color the clothes and we also use bleach to make the patterns on this one also accessories which is as you can see here and the shoes in the food security and soil category the saint mark's secondary and the grenada sda comprehensive schools were first we, the um, biology, from for biology students of the St. Mark Secondary School, created our yogurt brand called Yo Yogurt. So basically what we did, we made our own yogurt using local fruits, local chocolate that is made right here in Grenada and local spices. Hillsborough Secondary School and the Anglican High School placed first in the water category. So we got our water from our school sock shop sink and oil from leftover fried chicken. 
So we pour it into our water source and as they travel through the pipes, they come into our grease trap. This is called a separator and since oil is less dense than water, the oil will attach to the separator and go into the water filter. The St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School placed first in the Energy and Transport category and also in the Forestry and Biodiversity category in the Upper Secondary Division. Farmers in Grenada, usually after they harvest their bananas, they would usually throw away these parts of the plant. So we thought of really reusing that. So we take your banana stalk and your banana stem and you would grind it using a mincer grinder, as you can have over here. Then you would take a cut and you would squeeze out the banana stain. Banana stain is also known as tannic acid. But here, you see, we have a small sample of what it would look like when it's being extracted. Uh, many students find mathematics to be very difficult. So our, our game basically provides a creative way of learning the properties of angles formed by intersecting lines and the properties of the angle properties of triangle. Starting to play the game, we started to understand and then we started, the grades started to go higher. So then this game will help to stimulate the player's brain, develop critical thinking and develop and problem solving skills. The most futuristic awards went to the St. Louis RC Girls School with 3D Shapes Playground in the math category and River Road Inundation Project in the water category. This is a picture of the coca. We said that we would adopt the coca system from Guyana and put it at the mouth of the river by the Green Bridge. And what this coca does is that when the sea levels rise, the coca actually comes down. This blocks the flow of the water from the sea up into the river, but also blocks the, the flow of the river itself. So what happens is that the river water is pumped under and out. Also earning futuristic awards were the McDonald College's Edible Food Boxes Project in the Food Security and Soils category and the Hillsborough Government School's Bottle Stripping Machine Project in the Waste category. Well, in order for this project to have really fun, we we'll came together to use banana flour, shortening, margarine, salt, and we flour to make from a pastry dough to make edible bowls and so on. This is our portable bottle stringing machine which turns bottles into strings, plastic bottles. When the strings are turned into strings, you mix crafts and other objects. I was thoroughly impressed in terms of the creativity of the students and I believe that many of these projects they are extremely lucrative. Um, and they can help to move Grenada forward. Futuristic awards were also earned by the Grand Roy Government School for its project Ectopia in the energy category, Bishop College's Coastal Erosion Project in the coastlines and the ocean category, and the St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary Schools making ink from banana stain in the category forestry and biodiversity. I was elated. I think um, similar sentiments were expressed um, by them. And it definitely would be a boost for them. Thinking about putting it on the market. I find so. <laughs> Thank you very much. There are sustainability plans for the most promising projects moving forward, where students are encouraged and supported in executing projects in their schools and communities. Sponsors were recognized with tokens of appreciation, including major sponsors who were the St. Andrews Development Organization, SEDU, UNESCO, GIZ, and the Global Environmental Fund Small Grants Program. But there are some things that can only be a success when we learn how to work together and to do things together. And we appreciate the support that the government has received from all of our partners, making the science fair the success that it has been. For State of Affairs, I'm Annette Moore. This is the Grenadian reality. This is our current state of affairs.
Ministry of Youth Development, Sports, Culture and the Arts has initiated yet another program with the objective of creating avenues for youth development. The latest is the Empower program where 500 men within the age group of 18 and 35 from various communities across the state are now enrolled in one of the many youth development programs initiated through the ministry. More in this June Paul feature. 500 young men in Grenada and Kariku are now part of a $6.2 million Government of Grenada sponsored all-male program that seeks to improve their lives through diverse training. The recently launched Empower program, implemented by the Ministry of Youth Development, Sports, Culture and the Arts, is a component of the Aspire project specifically designed to meet the needs of males between the ages of 18 to 35 years. The bulk of the participants are spread throughout the 15 constituencies, while 30 are based in Kariku. Honorable Gregory Boeing, who was acting Prime Minister at the time of the launch, alluded to the fact that it is the job of government to create the enabling environment for the youth in achieving their dreams and in ensuring that no young person is left behind. This import program that we are undertaking through the Ministry of Youth is in response to what we have seen in recent years. By and large, our young men are being left behind in academics and in the professional world. Our young ladies continue to blaze the trail. And while we applaud this, and we continue to encourage the initiative and drive of our young women, we understand that we have to move swiftly to guarantee our young men at least have a chance for a better life and also to be good partners for a young woman. Speaking of government's plan in relation to the program, Honorable Boeing says the principal aim is to change the attitude of not only the young people but of those in government and by extension the entire nation. We are not only intending to make employees of our youthful population, our aim is to make employers of the youthful population. Addressing the large gathering at the Grenada Trade Center, Minister with Responsibility for Youth, Honorable Kate Lewis, spoke of government's continued commitment to the holistic development of the youth. Her one request to the participants, make maximum use of the opportunity granted. You have been granted a golden opportunity to be part of the Empower program which can help transform your life for the better. Please make the best use of it. Make it your duty to successfully complete the program. Do it for you. Do it for your family. Do it for your country. I say, just do it. The Empower program, which is receiving support from stakeholders and government ministries, embraces apprenticeship training, among others, as explained by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Mr. Kevin Andel. The purpose of the program is really to engage a cohort of young men, 500 of you, between the ages of 18 to 30 years, across the 15 constituency throughout our state. This program is geared to adopting an incremental four-phase approach whereby the cohorts, that's you, will be involved in a diversified training, inclusive but not limited to soft skills, direct skills, apprenticeship training, and psychosocial sessions. At the launch held over on the sister isles of Kariku and Piti Martinique, 30 young men were welcomed into the program. Honorable Kendra Matthew Rinstot, Minister with Responsibility for Kariku and Piti Martinique Affairs, Legal Affairs and Local Government, called on all to invest in the future of the youth. We therefore, I therefore call on all of the sectors in Kariku, in Piti Martinique, to make and to assist to make a difference in the young people of our country. Invest in our future. Invest in their future. Invest in our youth. We urge 
urge all the sectors should engage in the youth in all their endeavors so that of course we the young people can shape and mold future directions of, of future employment as drivers rather than receivers. Words of encouragement were echoed in welcoming the participants to the program by permanent secretary in the Ministry of Karyaku and Piti Martinique Affairs, Ms. Ralda Kwamina. So go to, to the institution with the right attitude and uh, let me tell you, wonders is going to work. You do not know who is looking at you and what are they thinking of you. So give the right impression about you. And so your recommendation is going to be written for you even before you even think of asking for one. Standing proud as a participant in the program, Kellon Charles delivered a promise on behalf of his fellow colleagues. We, the participant of the M Power Project, promise to take an active role in this dynamic project that was developed for youthful males. Complete the training to the best of our abilities and create opportunities to, to improve sorry, our academics and livelihood. The ambitious participants are confident about becoming agents of change. They are also optimistic that upon completion of the program, they will be better equipped and so offered advice to their peers. It seems like a positive event here, so I think it's going to be, it will pass well. I think uh, I could be, I'll be well trained after the year. Well, my aim is to just go out there and work hard and complete the training. I want to tell them to go out there and be positive for the they finish the training, to, know, to make the country better, to make yourself better, and the parents proud. I expect to achieve some of my goals, and um, I'm a farmer, not, no, I'm, I'm not a farmer, I'm a rookie farmer, let's just say a rookie farmer, and I'm looking out to be professional on it, so I would like to say, that's the first thing I would like to achieve, to be professional, but um, within the employment program it's a good initiative that the minister take to you're going to alleviate the crime a little bit because you're going to be more focused on something positive um the block um to be on the block like how we usually be on the block i will not be on the block anymore to argument and violence so that program is like a good initiative the twin brothers looney spark and electrify brought some sound advice in song, reminding all present that they are winners in their own rights. Because we can see the way the world is going and the trend with our young men. As they say, the young men gone astray, but today we're going to make a difference, right? And everything that you do, we want to put the most high God first, and you all are winners in your own rights. Let's go. I'm a winner. You are with us, so we are with us, with us, with us. I'm a winner, so you are with us. As I'm a winner, from the moment that I went up, I feel it rise. I feel it victorious from day to night. Nobody can stop you because I know you can do it. Reporting for State of Affairs. I am June Paul. And that's our picture this week from the home front. That's the current state of affairs. As we speak, our presenters and producers are gathering more stories from across Grenada as we prepare to tell them. I am Sherian Noel.